database profiling is critical for finding bottlenecks or other issues that might be degrading the user experience. In this episode, we're going to look at the built-in Firebase Profiler tool, which will give us a breakdown of the memory and speed performance of our database. This tutorial is done in the context of an Angular application, but it can just as easily be applied to the Firebase JavaScript SDK. If you're just getting started with Firebase, you'll need to install the Firebase Tools command line interface, and then initialize your project by running Firebase init. To demonstrate this feature, we're going to read and write a bunch of weather data in the Firebase database, which I've acquired here from the Dark Sky API. So I went ahead and parsed this JSON into JavaScript, and then I'm importing it in an Angular component here. When we save the data to Firebase, it's going to look like this, a big object with its own nested objects and arrays, not something you would consider optimized for efficiency in a NoSQL database. Then back in the Angular component, I'm going to create an observable stopwatch, which will help us determine the actual latency the user sees on the front end. So we can start the stopwatch as soon as we make a request, and then as soon as Firebase returns us an actual object, we'll stop the stopwatch, and then I'll display that number in milliseconds on the front end. We can do this in RxJS by creating an observable interval that ticks every one millisecond, and to finish the stopwatch, we just call unsubscribe on it. Then going down into the Angular component, we can just create a new instance of the stopwatch and then inject the Angular Fire database in the constructor. Then the first thing we'll profile is the write speed to the real-time database. First, I'll quickly show you the plain Firebase SDK code. Basically, we just make a reference to the database and then push new objects to it. Then back in Angular, we'll do the same thing, but using the Angular Fire 2 wrapper. And I want to push 20 objects to the database, so I use a for loop here, and then for each iteration, do db push. That's going to return a promise, so once we get to the very last iteration, we will wait for the promise to resolve, and at that point, we'll stop the stopwatch. Now to run the Firebase Profiler tool, all we have to do is bring up the command line and then run Firebase database colon profile. This command will record everything that's happening in the database until we actually tell it to stop. Now we can go into our Angular app and then run the write method, and that's going to put 20 different items in the database. And we can see we had 119 milliseconds of latency on the front end. Then we can go back to the command line and click enter, and then we get the report back from Firebase. There's a bunch of different stuff to look at here, but for this operation, we want to look at the write speed. So that'll give us the number of operations that occurred at this node and the average speed, and it will tell us whether or not permission was denied for that operation. We can also get feedback on the memory usage, and we can see each operation here required 29.87 kilobytes. You can see these figures for both the uploaded and downloaded memory. Okay, so now that we have some data in the database, we're going to start looking at profiles for reading data. The first thing we're going to do is read data as a list, and just to show you the regular Firebase code here, we just have a reference, and then we'll get the snapshot of that reference. Then in Angular, we start the stopwatch, and then we make a query for a Firebase list. Then I add some query parameters here to sort the elements by the child property of latitude. At this point, we don't have an index built for latitude, so this is going to be a very inefficient query. Um, but in the next step, I'll show you how to set that up in Firebase. And lastly, we subscribe to the observable and then stop the stopwatch once it emits some data. So we'll start a new profile, and then once we run this query, we get a warning from Firebase that we don't have an index on the latitude property. So we can optimize performance by going into the Firebase database rules, and then just adding index on with the property that we want to index. And Firebase will automatically create an index to optimize sorting by that property. If we rerun the query, we get a slight increase in performance and we no longer see the warning, but this will be a huge increase in performance as your list gets bigger. The profiler tool will also warn us if we're making any unindexed queries, so that's another nice feature of the profiler. The next performance topic we're going to look at is what happens when you make multiple queries at the same time. Intuitively, you might think making a whole bunch of queries at the same time is going to be really slow and inefficient. But in reality, Firebase handles everything in a non-blocking manner, so we can send multiple requests and it can actually still be really fast. So here I have 20 push keys from the database as an array, and we're going to make a separate request for each one of these push keys. Then I'm going to console log the request and the response in different colors, just to show you how Firebase actually handles these requests. And then like before, we'll stop the stopwatch once we get the last item back from Firebase. 
So if we run this code in the Angular app, notice we get 20 requests sent, and then we get a batch of 20 responses back all at the same time. So you can break your request into multiple smaller requests, and you won't have any loss in performance, generally speaking. This time I added a 100 millisecond delay between each request, and you can see we get the responses back in different size batches depending on when they're actually ready in Firebase. So the bottom line here is that you can send multiple simultaneous requests to Firebase without sacrificing much in terms of performance. That's it for Firebase database profiling. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to get involved with the channel, consider joining our Slack team or becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.